ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Rose. First of all, good morning. Let me join what uh, Peaches Blank said. You look good in red. Uh, I, know. I, uh, I don't know if it's contagious, but here we are. You know. What a great day to graduate. You, you have completed your part of the deal, and this day the university fulfills its final part of the deal. You leave here with a piece of paper in your hand, information and wisdom in your head, and a passion for learning in your heart. I want to thank this university, chancellor, deans, trustees, faculty, alumni, parents, and of course you, students of this class, for allowing me to share this time with you. I cherish the honor of being here and standing with William Julius Wilson and I. King Jordan. It would be remiss of me to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, the home of my birth, and not mention three friends who are great graduates of this university, Bill Friday, one of America's most honored university presidents. <laughs> Hank Shelton, a great warrior who rose to become chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And Jim Goodnight, who created a great company, SAS, and made it in the great spirit of American entrepreneurship. And his wife, Ann, who serves this university in so many ways. These people share they share not only a university, but they share a set of principles about what's right and what's wrong. There's also Robert Gibbs, who's now someone I have to go to if I want to interview the President of the United States, the President's press secretary. Say a nice thing about me the next time you see Mr. Gibbs on the campus. And then there's one other person uh, who's here. You know him well. His name is Tom Stafford. He is your Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs. He and I have been friends for some 50 years. We played basketball together. Um, as often is with a very successful man, uh, his wife was the smartest woman in our class. I want to congratulate the graduates and their families and their friends, but especially the parents. I know that you're all grateful to the faculty and the administration who helped you get to this point. I know a bit about this university. I know a bit about the history of these names that I see up here. I went to Duke as an undergraduate, and I can tell you that the Wolfpack have made me sometimes happy and sometimes wanting to cry. I also want you to know that this day is special and that I'm all red today, not blue. This day also means something to me because my father, who died in 1990, 20 years ago, wanted more than anything else to come to state. He had the grades and state wanted him. He had been accepted, but it was the Great Depression. And he said to me later, I couldn't go home and ask my father, who was having a hard time taking care of his family, to take from them so that I could go to college. But I want you to know this morning that I come to this university, I come to this place, with his spirit. So Charles P. Rose, Sr. joins me on this podium. I rode on his shoulders all my life, and as much as anything that I have accomplished, I wish that he could be here with you this evening, I mean this morning, to share this moment at State. He would have loved it. Okay. Another guest on my show, Edward O. Wilson, once noted that the shortest commencement speech ever made was by Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali got up, he went to the podium, he said, I'm going to be brief, that's it, and he went and sat down. 
It won't be quite that way. Another short commencement speech belongs to Dr. Harold Hyde. He said just nine words, know yourself, Socrates. Control yourself, Cicero. Give yourself, Christ. There was also the speaker who was speaking at Yale, and he said to the assembled students and family and faculty, I want to talk about Yale. So he talked about the letter Y, and he spent 15 minutes talking about youth. The letter A, he spent 15 minutes talking about ambition. The letter L, and he spent 15 minutes talking about love. And he talked about E for 30 minutes, about enthusiasm. And as he left the podium, a young undergraduate was, had his hands folded like this. And the speaker said to him, son, what did I say? that so moved you? The young undergraduate looked up, his hand still folded, and he said, Sir, I was just praying to God, thank God that this is not the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps, the most noble expression that sums up this day is Dr. Martin Luther King. In a magnificent voice, he said, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. And so are you. So are you, free at last, to continue the journey that you have come here. And you leave here with advantages that you have already won. You have lived in the world's greatest country. You are surrounded by great culture and great events and great people. You live in interesting times, interesting but difficult. There's never been a more challenging time today and never more of an opportunity to take our own destiny in our hands. You will need the skills that they gave you here at North State because you live in a century where those challenges are demanding solutions, whether it is global health, global poverty, tribal and religious animosities that lead to unspeakable violence against women and children, environmental threats and man-made disasters that are taking place as we sit here in the Gulf of Mexico. As big as the challenge is, you have the tools, especially at this university, from science and education that others before you didn't have. Who knows, perhaps among you or you or you, there is someone here that has a solution to great and tragic diseases. Someone who has a way to avoid and clean up the disasters that we see happening to our planet. Or a business idea, like Jim Goodnight. Or perhaps a defining work of art, a movie, or a book, or a Nobel Prize, or an Oscar. At the end of the day, the best thing that I have to say to you is my story. I am defined by my curiosity, and I come to you this morning as one who is engaged in the conversation of our time. I sit with people who touch our lives. I'm looking for their story, how they got there, what they learned, who influenced them, and what are their largest hopes and their deepest fears. The people at that table that I have in Washington or New York or wherever I go give me these essential lessons of life. Victory goes to those who work the hardest. Take the risk and the responsibility. Explore the unknown and never, never, never give up. If you can do that, if you can do those things, you can write your own future. The most important story in your life is the story which you have already started writing, and that is the point. You're the writer, you're the star, you're the director, you are the producer, you control the narrative, and you can change the ending if you want to, if you badly want to change it, you can. Here are a few suggestions for your story. Define yourself. Don't let anyone else, anyone else tell you who you are. Promise me today that no one but you will define who you are. No one will put a ceiling on you because of race, religion, economic status, and yes, gender and age. You define your success your definition, not societies, not your teachers, not even your parents, and certainly not a commencement speaker. You define your passion, 
Find your passion and go after it. Give it space, give it breath. Feed it and nurture it and free it. It will make your life an adventure. And at the same time, as you go on that adventure, you must define and connect with your values. Know what you stand for, the rock hard place beyond which you don't go because it destroys you. Without a personal honor code, you will be without a rudder. With it, you will have something to hold on to when you are tested or when you're tempted. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, what lies behind us, before us, are small matters compared to what lies within us. A journey of a thousand miles, as you know, begins with the first step. Start today. Don't spend your life getting ready. If you want to be a writer, write. If you want to be a painter, paint. If you want to be a scientist, do research. If you want to be an entrepreneur, start a company. There are these realities, though. The first, luck will play a role. Being at the right place at the right time can matter. I got to do that, so I got to do what I love. Because someone else turned it down at the time, not understanding its potential or its joy. They couldn't see around the clock its possibilities. The second is be prepared. Be prepared always. But know this, no matter how prepared, how smart and how strong, the unexpected will come. There will be tests and setbacks, rainy days. Also know this, as you take your first steps along this journey and make choices in your life, it'll be a bigger disappointment not to have tried. Or as someone said, at the end of your life, you will regret more when you said no than when you said yes. In all of it, people matter. People matter. Relationships matter. Friends matter. As important as getting an education here at North Carolina State, you have, over these years, made friends. Look to your right and your left and look up this aisle. You've made friends, close friends, and they have shared hopes and dreams with you and they've shared fears with you and long conversations with you about your life. You now go off in different directions to different jobs and different places and different relationships. Distance and new friends will test old friendships as new ones are made. Some of the relationships here will, however, be part of your life for your entire life. Friendship is one of those amazing relationships of life. Serve it and live it and nourish it, enjoy it, honor it and maintain it, and let nothing petty interfere with it. In life, you will find there are times that the only voice that comforts you will be that friend who understands you, and the bond can get you through the darkness to celebrate the night. This too, especially this too, don't forget that there are some amazing people here with you. They have helped you get here. They worked hard, and they saved, and they prayed, and they spent endless hours just to be able to sit here this morning with you, to share this time with you. This is their day, too. So give mom and dad, brother and sister, not only a hug, but let's give them a round of applause right now. Let them share their pride with you. Let them share their dreams with you because you are on your way to fulfilling their dreams, and this is an important step. I envy them, and I envy you. You have completed another chapter. Another step has taken. Go for it. Leave this place and have fun. As Steve Jobs said in a famous commencement speech, stay hungry and stay foolish. Thank you very much.